gentlemen, I would like to welcome to the stage, you've seen him on Jay Leno, you've seen him on Jimmy Kimmel, you've seen him all over the television. I want you to stand up and put your hands together for Michael Jr. Thank you so much. Well, why y'all stop clapping? I don't understand what this is. I'm just glad So we're going to have some fun. Um, my name is Michael Jr. I'm going to do some jokes. Um, but they're not going to start right away, though. I just want to point that out. So, um, see, for me, comedy is like, it's like dating somebody that you really, really like. You know? Um, and I don't want to rush this. You know? I used to do that. I used to come up on stage. I would do a joke right away, jump right in, you know, but, but I got hurt, man. So, you know. <laughs> and let's be honest, right? I'm sure you've seen a lot of comedians in your day. You know, I know I've had my share of audiences, you know. <laughs> but it didn't last. <laughs> so I just, I want this to be different, so. <laughs> We're doing comedy at a church. Like, like, how's this gonna work out, really? I mean, some people are like, I just came to see this thing explode. <laughs> What's so amazing about doing comedy at church, when I was a kid, laughing at church was illegal. You couldn't laugh at church. I remember one time laughing at church because this lady was jumping around and her wig fell off. So, <laughs> That stuff was funny. Her wig fell off, and then my I laughed. My grandmother would pinch and twist. I can understand a pinch. You're going to twist? That's the devil. Dude on stage is mad at everybody. I can't figure out why he's so angry. Seven years old, I figured out why he was so angry. He was angry because he had some phlegm caught in his throat. So at the end of every sentence, he'd try to get it out. He'd be like, the Lord said, ah. act like you ah. I'm like, Grandma, he need to gargle, Grandma. I'm seven years old, man. Church lasts six hours, too. Then we go in the basement and eat a sandwich and come back up. I'm like, what was that, a halftime or something? Actually, I'm going to be real with you. There's enough black people here. It was always chicken. Why we always got to eat chicken every single time? I know. I, I had to tell him. I'm sorry. It was, we at church, you know? And tuna. At the end of church, they would ask us, I was like, so you want to go? After this, we all going to go to the sister church. I don't even like the brother church. <laughs> One time I get to church, seven years old, there's a dead body in the front. It's a funeral. Nobody explains that to a seven-year-old Michael Jr. I'm thinking that's how they roll. <laughs> like every three weeks or so, they bring a dead body in as an example or something. <laughs> and the dude on stage yell at everybody in the audience like they the ones that did it. <laughs> I remember asking my grandmother, I'm looking for some explanation. I'm like, Grandma, what happened to the man in the box? What happened to the man in the box? Her whole explanation was, he in a better place. I'm like, what kind of box did he live in before? Dude on stage said he went to see the king. That was his whole explanation. He went to see the king. Ha! <laughs> I don't understand what that meant. They didn't even call the kids' choir to sing. I was in the kids' choir, not because I wanted to be in the kids' choir. I was in the kids' choir because I was a kid. <laughs> and it was a requirement. And what song we got to sing? So and very soon, we are going to see the king.
I don't want to see the king. I don't want to see the king. You ever go to a funeral and people always talking about the person in the box like they sure he going to heaven? And then they tell you, that they, and then the people get up there, they always talking about him. And the last thing you know, like the dude stabbed three people and he never prayed one time in his life. And all of a sudden, everybody, like, he's going to heaven. Like, I'm sure Uncle John is looking down at me right now and he's, a little tear is going down his eye. I'm like, he's probably looking up at you right now. <laughs> Listen, that's a sweat bead is what it is, a sweat bead rolling on. I just made that up right now. I just made that up. <laughs> even as a kid, growing up, we were poor. We weren't even poor. We were po. <laughs> we couldn't afford the other letters, man. <laughs> we had no money. I was actually being sponsored by a family from Haiti. Yeah, that's a funny joke. <laughs> I see this lady over here struggling. She don't know if she should laugh or not. <laughs> it's okay. You can laugh. You can laugh. When you're poor, your creativity excels. Like it really, really excels. I remember I wanted an action figure when I was 10 years old. I wanted an action figure so bad. My birthday came along. My dad hands me a box. I open it up. It's empty. He said, it's Invisible Man. I was like, that is awesome. I played with that thing for like three weeks, man. So my brother hid it from me. Couldn't find it nowhere, man. I knew he took it. We played games. We just made up games. We played this one game called uh, Talk About You. The instructions were to just talk about you. That's all we did. We talked about each other. My friends would talk about me. But like, Michael Jr., you got some big feet. And I was good at this game. I was like, oh, yeah, well, you're so dark-skinned. I bet if you ride a motorcycle, you get a ticket for tenant windows. <laughs> it's hilarious. White people are looking for black people to make sure they can laugh. It's just okay. Though. <laughs> it's okay. You sure? No? <laughs> we had no money, man. We had a my parents would buy us some stuff, but they couldn't pay for everything. Like we had the game operation, right? We ain't had no batteries. Then my cousin came over and he figured out a way how to plug it into the wall, right? It's a whole nother game now. The Operation Roulette is what we called it. It was Operation Roulette. Just played one time. We played one time. I was like, nah, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. He's like, it ain't my turn. Somebody else better go. It ain't my turn. Actually, you know what? Um, I made that up. <laughs> we weren't poor when I was a kid. I just said that because some jokes are funnier. <laughs> some jokes are funnier from a poor perspective. I'm going to prove it right now. You always, here's a great example. I'm going to tell you the exact same joke from a prosperous perspective. Watch what happens. When I was a kid, my parents bought us the game Operation, um, and we played it. not as funny, is it? Yeah. It's better if I was poor. So we're excited. Me and my wife just had a new baby. Had a new baby. Yeah. yeah well, that's how they come. It's new. My wife wanted to go to the prenatal classes, right? And I'm like, why I gotta go to class? You pregnant, I pass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could teach a class or something. I don't know what you want me to do, but I went to the class because I love my wife, right? And I'm afraid that they're going to play the video. 
I don't want to watch the video. I'm looking for Bible verses against the video. And then the doctor tries to throw in perks. The doctor was like, so listen, um, during birth, would you like to catch the baby? Catch the baby doing what? What are you talking about? I said, no, 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 no. If you want to, you can catch the baby. I'm like, isn't that your job to catch the baby? Do I get a discount if I catch the baby? What are you going to be doing while I'm catching the baby? You went to school to catch the baby. I do comedy. I shouldn't be catching the baby. Anybody here ever caught the baby before? Anybody ever caught the baby? Anybody dropped the baby? Anybody dropped the baby? I asked that question one time. A lady raised her hand. I'm like, you caught your own baby? What does that look like? I'm not sure why I growl when I tell that story. It's weird because I can't even tell the story without growling. I'm going to try it again. Like it, like it happened every time. I don't understand it. An ultrasound's come in color now. Did you know that? Which is ridiculous. I know it's a black baby. It better be a black baby. Ladies and gentlemen. The incredible, the amazing, Anita Renfro. Hey, everybody! Take your seats if you can. Hello, hello, how you doing? Y'all are hot. But not as hot as I'm going to be in 10 minutes. Here we are in my, uh, what I love to call the Pinterest palace. If you, (laughs) it's obvious we got a bunch of 20 and 30 somethings running this church. Uh, They have the, the, the prerequisite palette art, Uh, palettes. I I don't know. I don't know who decided this was a great idea. Uh, They're like, hey, um, let's find the material that is soaked with creosote and chemicals. It has a billion splinters. Let's make something out of that. Okay. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Um, And then, of course, in the chevron pattern. uh, Which no woman my size would be caught dead. Where? But since it's behind me, I think it's making me look smaller. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that is. Um, for those of you my age and older, you will recognize the chevron pattern as something else. We call it classic Charlie Brown sweater. Right here. Uh, which was not, not doing any favors for his hips. Anyway, uh, happy to be here tonight. I'm 52. I'm excited to be alive. I mean, at this point, it's all gravy. Am I right, people? If, if 52, I mean, seriously, it's amazing. What's great about this age, for those of you who haven't gotten here yet, let me just clue you in. Uh, We don't care anymore, okay? (laughs) There's just not that much we're upset about. We can't work it up anymore. I mean, we have have blown so much emotions over the course of our life. We're like, ah, no, no, I'm not going to get upset about that. Uh, uh, We're we're not sucking in our stomach for none of (laughs) y'all. wear bathrobes. In fact, we'll bling up this general vicinity. We're okay with that. Bedazzle it, maybe. We don't know. We have given up completely wearing Spanx as an object of any sort, under any sort of anything at all. No Spanx whatsoever, mainly because it cuts off the blood supply to our vital organs. And we're going to be needing those at some point. At some point. We're, also, we're also not concerned about certain things younger women are concerned about. Um, we are practically, let's be honest, unabductable. 
okay? Uh, ain't nobody ready for this jelly? Nobody. B, nobody would notice if we were gone. They'd be like, maybe she's at Michael's. I don't know. I don't know where she's gone. Uh, I'm 52. I have long hair. Apparently, when you're over a certain age, people start asking you, when are you going to cut your hair? When are you going to cut your hair? I'm like, never, because it hides things. <laughs> There's all manner of mess going on in this neck area that you don't want to know. It's creating shadows. <laughs> you got to flow in your gifts. Growing hair is my gift. Losing weight, not my gift. Growing hair. my spiritual gift. Uh, <laughs> apparently now also I'm starting to grow a soul patch. <laughs> Not as attractive, but I have rebuked it in the name of Nair and I need it to go away. Uh, I'm also able to grow something new. This is relatively new for me. Some of you maybe not so much, but this is a new one for me. Very disturbing. Something called skin tags. Uh, <laughs> They sound innocuous enough, right? Skin tags, you know? I don't even know what they're made of. Like, your body just had to make so much skin that it's like, wait, we'll make extra. <laughs> and they pop up like mushrooms after a rain, you know? Like, you know how that happens? Like, one night, there's no mushrooms, it rains, boo, next day, like a crop. So they come up on you suddenly, and you don't really know. They seem, like, flappy and detachable. <laughs> They are, in fact, not detachable. <laughs> you can pull and pull on those things, and, and you, you, might, you might get them off, but if you do, it will look like a CSI crime scene <laughs> in your bathroom right there. Don't, don't, they're, they're apparently attached deep to arteries of some sort. Um, but I've been trying to figure out what they're for, so I like to make up stories if I can't figure it out. Um, I went to Google and couldn't find out why your, your body grows them, but here's what I think they are. I think they are external storage places for when your brain has run out of gigabytes. <laughs> So you know when you're at a party and there's somebody who's next to you that you've known for 13 years and someone else comes up and you're ready to introduce them and you can't think of this person's name? You should have kept the skin tag. You don't know who you're erasing when you pull those things off. Sometimes the only way you can see them is in those um, 10 times magnification mirrors. You know about these ladies? You know about these? Okay, oh, 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 those mirrors are TMI. T M <laughs> to the I. Too much information. You don't need to know about that. I think after 30, you should never look at a 10 times magnification mirror. <laughs> I want to talk to the young girls here today because you don't know things about aging that aging girls know, okay? Here's the, here's the truth aging is all about what lines turn into curves and what curves turn into lines. When you're young, abdomen area, line. When you get old, curve. <laughs> when you're young, waist area, curve. Old, line. <laughs> when you're young, chin area, curve. <laughs> old, line. <laughs> Just hang on, honey. It's coming your way. Just hold... <laughs> I promise you. I promise you it is. Uh, I went to my doctor to find out why, why I was retaining so much water. Um, which I thought. I thought I was retaining water. I went to my doctor. Apparently, I'm retaining food. Uh, <laughs> super disappointing, because there's less you can do about that. There's no food tablets they can give you, but... Um, I went in and I'm like, okay, why am I eating less than I've ever eaten? And I weigh more than I've ever weighed before. And he's like, well, we need to find out about your BMI. And I'm like, okay, whatever that is. And he handed me a worksheet of algebra <laughs> from Satan. <laughs> and he wanted me to do this. Like, I think it's like a, see if you have early Alzheimer's. I don't know what the test is about. 
So I'm like, uh, doctor, you don't understand. I don't do math. The slot in my brain where math goes is full of moon pies. And <laughs> can't get any in there. So um, he took out his calculator. I don't know how he expected me to do it. Uh, the very first question on the sheet is to calculate uh, and, and convert your height in inches to centimeters. And I thought to myself, how did, how did, how did Canada get into this? I don't know. So... Uh, <laughs> Then, you know, times the circumference of the sun, minus the square root of pi, blah, blah, blah. But the reason I can't do math, I, it's, it's a real medical condition. I just found out about it. Some of you may have it too, and you just haven't had the diagnosis. But this is real. Um, I get achy and shaky whenever I am faced with any mathematical problems of any sort. It is called fibromyalgebra. <laughs> and... Uh, it's real, people. It's a real disease. I can't get a handicap parking sticker for it yet. Anyway, when he got done with all the little calculations, uh, there's a number that comes at the end of the calculations, and this number is supposed to tell you something important about your health, and that number revealed one important thing, and that is I am not tall enough. <laughs> which is why I'm wearing these heels tonight. <laughs> it's a health thing. Anyway, uh, well, while I was at the doctor's office, you know, sometimes you look around on the walls and they have like, I don't know, diagrams of the human body, sometimes ovaries, whatever. Uh, in this doctor's office, he had some health inspirational posters around the walls. And um, I think they're supposed to inspire you. So I was reading them wanting to be inspired. And there was a woman with like zero body fat, you know, in the middle, mid stride, she's running, she's enjoying it. I don't understand her at all, but she's just, woo, she's loving life. Her hair's just whipping back in the wind. She has her earbuds on. I'm sure there's some amazing music on and she's just, you know, making her life better and she's not sweating at all. And on the bottom third of the poster were, were these words and these words were meant, I believe, to inspire me. And they said this, for every mile you run, you add five minutes to your life. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> if I was running my fastest from a zombie, it would take me 12 minutes to make a mile. <laughs> if it takes me 12 to get five, How about I just sit on this couch for seven more minutes and order stuff from QVC? That would be in the air conditioning. Good grief. Thank you. I cannot believe this. You guys actually did it. You sold this place out, 4,000 people. Just go with it. We're not going to do any crowd shots. Um, no, thank you for coming out. I've been looking forward to this for so long. And, uh, and I, even though the day started out bad, uh, I actually flew in this morning and uh, the airline, they lost my bags, uh, which was my fault because I <laughs> flew. And um, I went to the baggage claim. I was like, I think you lost my bags. The guy didn't even look up. He goes, we did. And... Uh, <laughs> And the only reason why I wanted it is because, you know, we're filming and I wanted to, you know, look good and, be, and my toothbrush was in my bag, but I was able to get one here. You guys have an amazing Goodwill. Um, <laughs> no, I got it. It's a soft bristle. Um, someone's a biter. Um, <clears throat> So tonight, I wanted to answer a lot of questions that I get. I get a lot of the same questions. Uh, I'm going to start with the one I get all the time. Uh, no, I have never done any modeling. Um, <laughs> Could have, but didn't. Um, no, I'm kidding. I know what I look like. There's mirrors backstage. I, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, and I'm fine with it. I look like somebody cloned Conan O'Brien and Carrot Top before the steroids. Um, <laughs> And I'm fine with that. This is the way God made me, and, and, and you know, and it's, it's good for laughter. Um, you know, I've been doing comedy for 20 years, and so it's good for... And actually, I always like to meet people that don't have a sense of humor. Uh, I met a guy a couple of weeks ago who had no sense of humor. I was standing behind him at an ATM, and I thought this was hilarious, but as soon as he put in his password, I just went, got it, and I took off running. <laughs> Hmm. 
he did not look like a sprinter. And I, <laughs> he caught me, and I quickly tried to explain the joke, but evidently you can't have a sense of humor if you're an undercover cop. Um, <laughs> And by the way, I do, I, I say that, but I do, I love uh, law enforcement. I really respect those guys. They are amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I parked in handicap. <laughs> um, we, um, but no, and uh, another question I get that I always like to address is a lot of people want to know, like, where did you get your sense of humor? How did you get funny? Uh, I was very blessed to grow up in a very, not only Christian home, but a very funny home. My dad is one of the funniest guys. I've ever, we have the same personality, which is weird because we don't look alike at all. My dad weighs 230 pounds. He's 5'7". Um, yeah, and he's always been big. I asked my grandmother, I was like, was he ever skinny like me when he was young? And she was like, no. <laughs> He was born on a Thursday <laughs> and a Friday. So, <clears throat> and I'm not making fun of him because he loves being big. He loves it. He's always like, Bob, come stand next to me so we look like the number 10. I'm like, okay. <laughs> But he is, he's so quick-witted, and I grew up around that, and it was uh, a blast. Actually, this is a good example. Um, it, I spent Thanksgiving with him, and I was helping my mom uh, unload stuff out of the attic, and uh, she had found her old ballet box, and uh, she was going through it. She was like, oh, I used to love to wear this tutu, and my dad was like, nowadays it'd have to be a 4-4. Four -four. And I... <laughs> Don't go, oh, she's quick, too. <laughs> She used a four by four. So, <clears throat> but he is, he just, he's very, very funny. Actually, that's a good example. Um, since I didn't look like him growing up, uh, especially, uh, I went to him my second junior year in high school and I... <laughs> don't judge me. You guys are supposed to be Christians, okay? Like, you're supposed to judge me silently in your mind. So. <clears throat> I went to my dad, and I was like, I don't look like you at all. Was I adopted? And he goes, yes. <laughs> but they brought you back. So, <laughs> the only difference is, like, he likes to pull pranks. He used to love to pull pranks, because he figured out early on that my brain is a little different than most um, <laughs> humans. Um, <laughs> And so he would, he would mess with me and I would buy it because it, he actually convinced me if the ice cream van was playing music, it meant it was out of ice cream. Uh, you never knew what he was up to. I got all excited because he built me a tree house and I was all like really excited until he moved my bed and dresser out there. <laughs> And he wasn't mean. I don't want you to think he was mean because my dad, I love, I still love my, I mean, I hang out with him and stuff. So, oh, um. We would do stuff as a kid. I think I can talk about this um, <laughs> because I mean, here's the deal. California, I, I live in Texas, and, you know, you guys, uh, California and Texas have some of the same similarities, um, some not. You know, like in Texas, when you go to a store and you buy their product, you get a, this is going to be crazy to you guys, but you get a thing called a free bag. <laughs> Are you kidding me, California? I went to the store today and I bought some stuff and I reached back and grabbed a bag and the lady was there. She was like, can I have a dime? And I was like, are you homeless? What is going on? <laughs> but here's why, here's why I'm kind of pausing during the story. because when I do comedy, I never want to offend anybody. Like I, I want everybody to have a good time and, um, and not everybody agrees on what is offensive and what is not. So there's certain topics I try to stay away, like discipline. Like I'll never talk about discipline. Like how do you discipline your kids here? <laughs> you don't? Okay, wow. Well, that explains how California ended up like this. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> we don't. Some people are for timeouts, some people are um, for spankings, but that's a hot topic among, you know, and I'll be honest, I don't want to offend anybody. But I've got, I'm raising three boys, and I spank my kids when they're bad. Yeah, well, okay, all right. 
I'm glad other people applauded because I just heard you and I thought you were spanking somebody. So, it is, and, and, I, and I do it in love too. Plus, I, I study, I got the James Dobson Strong Willed Child book and that helped me so much because it was thick enough that when I spanked them, <laughs> I told that joke in a church one night in Michigan, and this lady came up after the show, and she was like, you're advocating child abuse. You should never spank your children. And I was like, you're a Christian. Haven't you read Proverbs where they talk about it? And she was like, that was different. That was the Old Testament. They didn't have time out back then. And I was like, what? It's like, yeah, they did. What was the lion's den, huh? Like, Because spankings worked on me. I grew up in a loving Christian home, but that, when I was bad, I, ooh, one time one of the worst spankings I ever got was uh, I was down front at church, and my dad was leading singing, and my dad said, on this next song, let's stand to our feet. And I don't know why I did this, but I was like, yeah, everybody, stand to your feet. Good thing he said that. I almost stood to my liver. <laughs> we never sang that song. He shut the book, he walked right down, he picked me up, he carried me like a football outside. And, and I deserved it. These people are going, oh, I deserve the spanking. But you are right, it was embarrassing because it was right in front of my children. And <laughs> Please welcome Nazareth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming tonight. Wow. Sold out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, I love, thank you, Crossroads, for having us. This is awesome. This church is getting so big. I'm afraid when you start calling the prayer hotline, you're going to get a guy from India <laughs> to answer <laughs> the phone. People say, what do you do, Nazareth, to prepare for this? What do you do a week before to prepare for this? I stay off the 91 freeway. That's what I do. <laughs> Anybody drove on the 91 freeway coming here? And they still have construction on it. You know, these people, when they die and they're running to the gates of heaven, they're going to be orange cones that will lead them to hell. Because <laughs> the whole freeway system in California is the work of Satan. <laughs> you think of Satan as someone who's wearing a red suit and a fork. No, he's wearing an orange suit and a shovel. <laughs> But uh, to those that don't know me, I am from the Middle East, but ever since September 11th, I feel so Mexican. <laughs> you know, I fly a lot and I always miss my connection flights because I can't run at the airport anymore. <laughs> if you look like me, don't run anywhere. <laughs> People will tackle you. In the name of freedom. <laughs> like when you guys travel, you check the weather channel, we check homeland security colors. <laughs> hey kids, it's orange, we can't take a vacation this year. <laughs> you know, I feel my job as a Christian is to comfort you on the plane. It doesn't work. How many of you have flown since September 11th? Aren't you glad I was not sitting right next to you on the plane? <laughs> I don't care how Christian you are, you get nervous at 30,000 feet next to me. I had a priest, a priest, sitting there, he goes, you're not Middle Eastern, are you? I go, yes, I am. Because <laughs> it's your allegiance to this country? I said, yeah, I want to die here. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> What happened? We used to be your 7-Eleven people, remember? <laughs> Where did we go wrong? We stayed up all night for you people. The Koreans went to bed at 9. We stayed up all night. <laughs> we took your camel jokes, your slurpy jokes. They didn't bother us. I even have little kids come make fun of me. This girl comes to goes, do you know where Middle Eastern people go when they die? I'm like, where, honey? Heaven 11. Ha! Ah, get out of <laughs> I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, what do I tell airport security? And God said, Celine Dion and Alton John. 
I go, come again, Lord. I don't speak Hebrew. <laughs> and God said, when you sing, you don't have an accent. It's true. So now I don't talk to airport security. I sing to them. <laughs> I look at the officer and go, hello. Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> He goes, where are you from, boy? I go, this land is my land. This land. What are you doing here? I believe I can fly. <laughs> you saw me listen. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> you know, I tried everything. Nothing works except nobody is scared of a girly terrorist. <laughs> so now I go to the airport, go, hi, who's going to frisk me today? <laughs> Let him go. Because <laughs> I fly. I fly a lot. I was in Texas the other day. Any Texans in the house? I was in Frisco, Texas. And, and the cowboys think they can intimidate me. This cowboy comes to me and goes, hey, boy, I know where you're from, so don't be doing anything funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm a Californian. I don't own a gun. <laughs> and then after the show, they have fireworks. And he comes to me and goes, hey, boy, you have fireworks in the Middle East? I go, yeah, but they come down. <laughs> and then I went to Canada in December. Minus 40 degrees in Calgary, Canada. And the pastor goes, it's a little nippy. <laughs> nippy, I'm from California. We evacuate in this... If you can die at room temperature, that's not nippy. <laughs> I feel sorry for marriages over there. Can you see the wife going, honey, I don't feel your love. You don't feel my love. I don't feel my feet. <laughs> and then I was invited by Ramstein Air Force Base. Our, where's our military people? Raise your arms. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. They invited me to Germany on the 10th year of September 11th. Me to Germany. I thought they're trying to deport me nicely. I'm not used to seeing a lot of family and friends in the crowd. And so here's anything that was not hilarious, I blame it on them. Because I usually, when, they, when they're not at shows, it goes great. So when most of this show, I felt very pleased with. However, the parts that did not, I feel like I attribute that to my family and friends for having been, for having been kind of freaked me out just a little bit. All right, coming to the stage now is a man who you have seen on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Not once, not twice, but zero times. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hand together for Mr. Claiborne Cox. outside and uh, I got bit I was barefoot for one thing and I got bit by a big old fat ant and it was Aunt Peggy mm. <laughs> mm. We're kind of doing a thing here. <laughs> um, 
I love Aunt Peggy because she used to teach me all those old Alabama sayings. Like, um, an apple a day will not keep a doctor away, but a restraining order will. <laughs> don't kill into your chickens because those chickens might not, they're probably not even your chickens. They might be wild chickens or they might be somebody else's chickens. If you're illiterate, you have to judge a book by its cover. I think probably the stupidest song that I've ever heard is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are. There's a star, like you just said that. <laughs> I started a hotline for people who struggle with incompletion. Just dial 1 800. Back when I was growing up, we've gotten better now, but this is true. When I was growing up, we ranked 49th in education. And I told my school teacher, and she said, who got 4010th? <laughs> I told that Mississippi they didn't get it. <laughs> I used to get a lot of A's on my report card. Um, they were all up at the top. We're in Alabama. <laughs> Sometimes I got five or six because they spelled it wrong. <laughs> I just sat at my desk and sucked at sunflower seeds. So I was pretty disappointed when somebody else in my class got voted most likely to suck seed. My mom used to send me to therapy every time I ever argued with any of my brothers. Probably because I'm an only child. <laughs> Y'all remember those old commercials for sure in for sure deodorant? Do Y'all remember that? Raise your hand if you're sure. My mom used to buy me perhaps deodorant. <laughs> Their slogan was perhaps you should keep your arms down. <laughs> And trust me, the expiration date on the bottom of deodorant is there for a reason. If you eat it after that, you will get sick. <laughs> My, uh, let me ask you, sir. You, I see you, you look kind of familiar to me. What is your name? Trey. Trey, okay. Well, there, that's not, I'm not super interested anymore. However... <laughs> Here's the thing, you look like a guy, one of my old roommates from like back at Auburn. And uh, I just remember one time, okay, we had to share a bathroom. And there were like other, there was other roommates in there, but I had to share my bathroom with one. And for one, for one day, I don't know why he decided to, he put his toothbrush in my toothbrush cup. And like he had his own toothbrush cup. So why did he put it, I don't know why he put it in my, it bothered me. And so I wrote on a post-it note, my toothbrush is vastly superior to your toothbrush. And I put it up on the mirror. Well, apparently he didn't appreciate that, and so he drew a picture of little muscular arms and taped them to his toothbrush. He laid my toothbrush out flat, so it looked like his toothbrush had, like, knocked out my toothbrush. <laughs> no, you don't. So I took off the little muscular arms, and I taped on two little scrawny Q-tip arms, and then I snapped one of the Q-tips, homeboy, right? What? <laughs> So then he got dental floss and he hung my toothbrush from the towel rack. No, no. You can mess with me, but you don't mess with my toothbrush and you don't, that's basically it. You just don't mess with it. Right? And so then I got a sharp kitchen utensil and I gave it to my toothbrush and I laid his toothbrush in a pool of ketchup. So how's that? How do you like them? Well then, so he stopped up the water in the sink and he put my toothbrush face down in the water, and his was just peering over the ledge. So, <laughs> yeah. 
So then I started up a Facebook page for my toothbrush, and I didn't even give his toothbrush any type of social media, so it looked like his toothbrush didn't even have a life. <laughs> I am... Um, my wife, she's wonderful. She's uh, here somewhere tonight. Where is my wife? There she is. Give a big hand to my wife. Everybody, please. <laughs> Thank you. My kids, actually, my kids are back there. Y'all give a hand to my kids. Everybody, thank you. They're, they're about 10, 12 miles back. They're still at home, so. <laughs> my wife is great, and I love her so much, but sometimes she asks me weird questions, and I don't know how to, how to deal with them. Like the other night, I'm not making this up, she said, Claiborne, would you still love me if I had a third eye? <laughs> what? <laughs> she said, would you still love me if I had three eyes on my face? I was like, baby, you know I love you, but we cannot afford that kind of surgery right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> to reinforce how much I love my wife, I decided to write her a little song. Would you mind, I don't have the boombox, could you just come and hold the mic for me while I do a little song? Thank you. Give a big hand for, for this gentleman. <laughs> most intense argument a man and woman will ever have begins with this exchange. Where would you like to eat tonight? <laughs> this conversation goes the same every time. I don't care. Young men, look at me. They care. You listening to me? They care. If you don't believe they care, just name a place. Uh, let's go to Fred's. I would prefer that we do not go to Fred's. Why do you not want to go to Fred's? Well, um, you may remember last time we were there, I ordered and the waitress came, and I'm telling you, Ken, she had a tone. She had a what? A, a tone. There was a tone to her voice. I do not want to go to Fred's. I will not eat at Fred's. Okay, let's go to the barbecue place. No, I do not, I do not want to go to the barbecue place. <laughs> Why do you not want to go to the barbecue place? Because the last time we were there, I, I drove past there yesterday on the way uh, to shopping, and I saw a rodent, a dead rodent, on the road. <laughs> what does that have to do with friends? <laughs> or the barbecue place? <laughs> It doesn't have anything to do with friends. <laughs> what does that have to do with the barbecue place? He might have come from the barbecue place. <laughs> he looked a little barbecue. <laughs> well, where would you like to go? I don't care. <laughs> What 
What is your name? Josh. Josh. How old are you, Josh? <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen years old. Stand up, Josh. <laughs> Folks, look at Josh. <laughs> Turn around, Josh. <laughs> are you married? <laughs> Josh, you ever wonder what it's like to be married? Yeah, thank you. Honest. I love honest. You see, so I get guys that lie to me. No, no. I've never thought of it. Never thought of it. It really doesn't matter either way because every thought you've had is wrong. <laughs> Stay there. Did I tell you you could sit down? <laughs> Do you like to sleep, Josh? Yes, I do. Forget that. <laughs> you see, Josh, the Bible says that God made the sun to rule over the day. I'm here to tell you that God made woman to tell you what went wrong while the sun was supposed to be doing its job. <laughs> she does it at night. <laughs> you can sit down, son. Someday you will be married. You're a handsome young man. You will be married. Remember this. Remember this. I may be gone. I, I may be gone already, but maybe not. If I'm not, email me and tell me, because I'm telling you now it's going to happen. You will be lying in bed. You will be, you will be almost asleep, and you will hear this. <laughs> Look at me, Josh. That night is over, Josh. <laughs> Every man in here will tell you that that night is over. There is nothing you can do. What's wrong? Nothing! <laughs> Seventeen. Wow. When I look down and see how young you are and the fact that you have hair <laughs> of your whole life in front of you, I just want to slap you. <laughs> My only revenge is that someday you will wake up and be 55. <laughs> and you will walk into a room and make a little circle like a dog looking for a place to lay down. Because you're trying to remember why you came into the room. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I alone here? Do any of you ever leave and come back hoping that will trigger something? Let me see your hands. If I didn't have a wife, I wouldn't know where I am ever. I wouldn't have a clue. Just the other day, I called to her. Diane, honey, help me. I've been in this room for 15 minutes. I have left twice. I still do not know why I am here. They are without mercy. You're in the bathroom, idiot. Figure it out. Look, look at Josh going, didn't you have to go? I tell you something, son. You get my age, you don't go when you have to go. You go when you're supposed to go. When's that? 
wiped your pens. So, <laughs> But I'm telling you, son, sleep is over. Sleep will not happen. 43 years of marriage, just a couple of weeks ago. I'm laying in bed. I have reached that point. Do you know that point where you're just going to sleep, that marvelous, that wonderful point where um, you, you're going into that, that point where your body goes. <laughs> Cat hits the wall. <laughs> Your wife goes, what, 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 what? <laughs> oh, I was right there. That beautiful spot, that wonderful, that wonderful spot. And I heard. Are you awake? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> she said, I've been thinking. I said, I've been sleeping. <laughs> then she said the words that strike fear into the heart of men worldwide. You don't share your feelings anymore. <laughs> Women look at me. We don't have feelings. We have a remote control. Now, I, I, don't, I do not want you to make a mistake here. I do not want you to think that I am in a bad marriage. I am in a marvelous marriage. I love this woman. We laugh together. We have great times together, but our marriage is real. And this is part of the deal. We're different. We communicate differently. I, I'm sick of people lying about that. And so we have to learn how to do it together. This woman has stayed with me for 43 years. There have been times of my life when I was an absolute idiot. An idiot. <laughs> You're a dead man. You're a dead man. Get rid of that hideous thing. Was only sincere. Uh, this is—I've been looking forward to this for a long time, and I will tell you why. Uh, I, I, I live in Indiana. Um, it's, really? Okay. And uh, I, I, I love being uh, from Indiana, I, and I think everybody loves their hometown, right? You love where you're from. You love where you're from. You're from Little Rock. You still love it, right? Right? Not so much. Okay. But your hometown is special to you, and I would not leave the Midwest for anything except to move to a town right here in Arkansas that I just found a couple of weeks ago. Um, I would leave for this. The name of the town is spelled F-L-I-P-P-I-N. I should be from there. Because everything at that point would be a joke. Hey, I'm John, and I'm from Flippin' Arkansas. <laughs> My brother's a flippin' cop on the police force. Every Sunday, my family and I are at the flippin' Church of Christ, front row. Graduated from flippin' high school, got the flippin' diploma right on my wall. Go birds. Oh. 
Well, what would, I'm just assuming, what would they be called? I don't know. I guess. Hand out those giant foam hands at football games, there'd be problems, wouldn't there? Christian people, we are the ones, we should set the bar, show the rest of the world how to laugh and have a good time. Don't you agree with that? Because everything that happens to us in the scope of eternity is a joke anyway, you know? When we get to heaven, none of this stuff is going to matter. Stuff we get worried about. If you're a doctor down here on earth, there's no sickness, there's no disease in heaven. So, right? if you're a lawyer down here on earth, you probably won't get to heaven. It's too early to start judging. You know, God made funny stuff everywhere. He built it into creation. Are we supposed to laugh? Yes. He made things to laugh at everywhere. He made West Virginia. <laughs> Come on, those people are not here. I was driving in West Virginia recently. There was a sign next to the road. Right next to the road had a picture of a cell phone on it with a red circle around it and a line through it. And it said, report distracted drivers. <laughs> Underneath that, there was a telephone number. Come and get this guy. He's talking on his cell phone. There's two of us. I get this question from Christian people when they do shows in churches. Christian people will ask, do you think God has a sense of humor? What do you think? Do you think God has a sense of humor? Hmm? Like, he made you, didn't he? Heaven just, all you gotta do is open your eyes, look around. You can tell that God has a sense of humor by the way he made us. I mean, we don't have to be the way we are, but we're hilarious. We sneeze, it's fantastic. I think it falls into like three categories, three major categories. There's people uh, like me, and you always know when the sneeze is coming because there's this big buildup, and I'm like. And then it's gone. It just disappears. I can't remember my middle name. But then I've got a friend, a friend of mine, and there's no warning when he sneezes. You're in the middle of a conversation and yeah! And then my sister, Bonnie, and it's usually women, it's usually girls that do this. When my sister sneezes, there's this big buildup. She goes, ah, 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 <laughs> that cannot be good for you, ladies. You can't have ah without chew. That has to go somewhere. It's going to wind up on your thighs. That's not cellulite, that's unreleased chew right there, just stacking up. You ever, have you ever uh, done this on a Sunday morning? You don't have time for church, or you don't have time for, uh, for church, you don't have time for other stuff to do. You don't have time for, for breakfast, and you're on your way out to church, dash out the door, um, settle down in your seat, it's dead quiet in the room, minister gets up to preach, and you're going, I think that's the Holy Spirit moving. <laughs> have you ever done this? Any other place where you have to be quiet? Or maybe at church or during a test in the classroom? You ever choke on your own spit? in it. <laughs> Farts are funny. I know, in every group, somebody goes, no, they're not. And with all due respect, you are wrong. <laughs> they're proof that God has a sense of humor. They're divinely funny. They're like the perfect universal punchline. They require no setup. 
You don't have to speak the language. And no matter how many times you've heard it before, you will still laugh. Right? I picture God up in heaven after he made man. He's pretty proud of himself. He brings the angels over. Hey, come here, look at this. I made this. It's man. <laughs> now, the way I designed his digestive system to work, it builds up gas. It has to come out. Rather than have it be released through his pores like I did with the plants, check this out. <laughs> you are hysterical, Lord. <laughs> What's that smell? I know, I thought that up too. That is so deaf people can appreciate them. I mean, Jesus went around with 12 fishermen. Fishermen, ladies and gentlemen. You think they were sitting around campfires? Oh, excuse me. No, James and John were called the sons of thunder. This is exactly what church is supposed to be like. I mean, every Sunday, this is this is what it's supposed to be like. If you're not having fun in church, you're doing it wrong. You're not paying attention because you can have fun in church. You should. There's a million ways to have fun in church. <laughs> you can have fun in church just drinking apple juice if you put it in a Budweiser bottle first. <laughs> Share it with all the kids in the nursery. Here you go. And uh, next time they pass the offering plate down your aisle, take a little squirt of whipped cream and <laughs> put that in there. You're welcome. And I got this a little while back. This is my favorite uh, thing. It's an electronic cigarette, just a battery. No fire, no smoke, no nicotine, just a vapor. But check this out. This thing is a blast in the front row of church on Sunday morning. Preach it. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing intrinsic. There's nothing really wrong with if we're gonna say, if we're gonna say that God made everything, Christians. That means He made everything, right? Including tobacco and alcohol. He's not standing up in heaven, looking down, going, "Look what they're doing with grapes." <laughs> I never saw that coming. You know, people say, like, cigarettes are like hamsters. They're perfectly harmless until you put one in your mouth and light it on fire. <laughs> there's, just, there's just certain places where you don't expect to see a cigarette, right? <laughs> Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> Welcome to Vacation Bible School, boys and girls. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> it may have been a little too far, right? I know it's an imaginary baby, but still, it's not right. Just that or something. That was a thing of beauty. And I almost never, I almost didn't make it down for the show, too. That's, that's the thing that's, I was, okay, I'm, I'm, ju I'm jumping on the plane, and all I forgot to do was stick my little chapstick in the Ziploc bag. 
You know where you put the, where you put your gels and your liquids? Just put it in there with the, when you're going through the plane? I just forgot to stick it in there. Security guy was like, oh, uh, you didn't put your chapstick in there. You forgot to put it in there. And I, it's a gel. You're supposed to put it in the bag. I was like, oh, I guess I must have just forgotten. I'll, I'll take it now. And he's like, no, no, no. Uh, I need to confiscate it because you didn't put it in the bag. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's chapstick, you know? What do you do with chapstick? You know, take me somewhere. Granted, it did say lip balm on it. It did say lip balm, hey? A little phonics joke, hey? Got a clapping from the teacher in the back. I don't know. I, uh, at least I flew in, you know, at least it was a nice big airport to come here. I've been flying into some crazy small airports as of late. I, fl I was in uh, Arab, Alabama a couple nights ago. Um, I've, been into, I've been smaller, okay, in Canada, I'm, I'm Canadian, uh, in Canada, I've flown into some tiny airports up north, like just the smallest things you, I flew into this place called Trail, British Columbia, and honestly, I think they decided that week, hey, let's be a commercial airport, huh? <laughs> because it was, the, it was the most, it was the tiniest thing, I, I, honestly, I think this is what happened, I think they went to the farmer who had a little shack and, or shed there <laughs> near the landing strip, and they said to him, hey, um, can we buy that from you? Because we want to fix it up and turn it into a terminal. <laughs> and then they just never got around to fixing it up. <laughs> Seriously, it was a slanted roof. Honestly, I had to walk in like this. I'm like, are you kidding me? What is this, a chicken coop? It was, the, it was dirty, it wasn't even clean, it was, and no one worked there. It was like empty. They had this little concession basket. They didn't have a concession stand, they had a basket. Honestly, it had Doritos in it, right? <laughs> And then it had a little sign that said 75 cents on the honor system. <laughs> right? It's on the honor, because no one was working. I guess they were off feeding the chickens. So I, I put my 50 cents in, I grabbed the chips. <laughs> no. No, I didn't have any money. I just grabbed it. Um, that's not true either. No, I put my money in, I grabbed it. But here's the other thing, because that was on the honor system. Uh, here's where it gets scary. Um, uh, airport security. Um, also on the honor system. <laughs> I'm not making this up. The guy asked me. That's how he did it. He asked me. So you, uh, you have any bombs or anything in there in, in your bags there? Um, no. <laughs> Should be fine then. Let's go. <laughs> that was it. What if I would have said yes? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. I do have some bombs. You do? Oh. Um, uh, you're not gonna detonate it in the air or anything, are you? No, no. I should. Oh, it should be fine then. Come on. <laughs> Better get out there and load the plane. The, Pilots are done milking the cows. <laughs> this is a tiny little thing. I've had weird things happen in, in Canada when I've been flying in. Uh, I flew into Calgary this one time, bigger airport. You know, it's a city of a million people. Um, flying into this airport, um, I, I got a window seat so I can see we're about to touch down. Like we're, we're feet from touching down. We're almost touching down. And then right before we touch down, the captain cranks back on her. We go straight back up again, right? It was, it was yeah, it was like, it was right down. I was like, <laughs> We take off again. Everybody's getting freaked out now, right? It's like, whoa, you don't, you don't take off like that unless something major just happened, right? We're all just a little bit worried there until the captain comes over the intercom and he's like, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. There was a uh, coyote on the runway. There's a coyote on the runway? Shouldn't this thing be fenced or something like that? It's just wide open. Come on, let the animals just run around and have fun. Look at all the freedom, all the room we have here. I don't know. Don't tell it to the terrorists, I guess, right? <laughs> if they know that that's the deal, they'll be dressing up in fox outfits and bear outfits and everything. Just, ah, oh, no, I'm an animal. Oh, okay, come on to the tarmac. Just run on there. Don't forget your lip balm. Oh, thank you. I'll need that for later. <laughs> I don't know. When I started doing comedy, though, um, I've been doing comedy for a while. When I started doing comedy, I promised myself I would never do... Uh, a joke about the air sickness bag, a little barf bag there. It's hack. It's you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that kind of stuff. I promised myself when I started I would never do a joke about an air sickness bag. Um, but this one time um, I was. <laughs> well, when it happens, you gotta talk about it though, right? So this one time I'm flying. It was I was in the U.S. I'm flying, and I'm sitting beside this lady. Normally I have a little snooze, right? I just go to sleep right away. I don't really talk to people. But for some reason, you know, I just I, I, I struck up a conversation with this lady, lovely lady. We were talking, had some grandchildren. Very, she showed me pictures of it. 
and, and we hit a little bit of turbulence, not much, just kind of a little bit of a boom, right? And she got sick fast. Like, I've never seen someone go, and, but luckily, she was a super fast draw, too. Like, if she was in the Wild West, she'd still be alive, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it happened so fast. I was just talking to her, yeah, well, that's interesting. Well, and another one, and she filled it just like that. I mean, it was the fastest. I, I, that's why I said I'd never do a joke about it. It's, it's sickening. But I didn't, want, I didn't want her to feel bad. Obviously, she's, you know, a little bit of turbulence set her tummy off a little bit, and I didn't want her to feel even worse, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll uh, maybe keep the conversation going so she doesn't feel even worse yet, you know? But then I didn't know what to talk about, right? So I was like, well, it's a funny noise that throwing up, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> blah! <laughs> Sounds like you're bored or something. How was the flight? Kind of blah! <laughs> it's a good in-flight meal, though, wasn't it? Was it delicious or what? I guess you've known, you've seen it twice. Am I right? <laughs> blah. Did you find it kind of blah? <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bathroom here, excuse me. I didn't know what to do. And then when we, we left, she just stuffed it into the seat pocket in front and we, sh <laughs> seriously. And then she was like, come on, let's go. And all of a sudden I'm an accomplice? What, okay. Uh, shouldn't we tell somebody or something? She was like, be quiet, right? Like, it was like, it was scary. We just walked out. I feel bad for the next guy, right? Poor next guy coming down there. Boy, I love these in-flight magazines. Pfft. Oh, what? Really? Because I find them kind of bleh myself. But I don't know. That's why I said I'd never do those kind of jokes. Terrible. Terrible. I, uh, here's a weird thing that happened to me. I'm walking around uh, here in Arizona, walking down on the street. Um, the police just stopped, I guess, to check in on me and see how I was doing, all these kinds of things. Uh, they asked me for some ID. I didn't have my passport or anything with, uh, with on me. And the next thing I know, I'm in Mexico. Is that uh, happen? Does that happen a lot? Luckily, it was pretty easy to, to cross that border. You just jump a fence and you're back in. <laughs> The can hey, it's, it, it doesn't work that way coming in, like from Canada into the U.S. That's not easy. Like it used to be happy. It used to be fun. It used to be when we were younger, and Canadians would come in. They'd be like, come on in to America. We'd love to have you. They were happy. They were excited. The only thing they cared about was don't bring your dirty, filthy Canadian fruit. That's all they cared about. <laughs> Apparently, we've got bad fruit. I don't know what it is, but no fruit. Okay, no fruit. But now they're mad all the time. They're mad. Every time you go by there, they're always, they're mad about something. I tried to lighten it up the last time I went through. You know, I was going through. The guy's like, so, uh, you see, you're a comedian? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, so what are you going to be talking about? I was like, I don't know. Depends how well this goes. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. No. And don't do this, too. Don't do that, either. I do not care for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause and a big welcome to Ken Kington. say to quit on the high note. Thank you, good night. <laughs> you guys are incredible. Thank you for being here. I am just so blessed and humbled and honored. And can I just say this? I love women. I just love women. Yes. I got half of you. All right, that's awesome. Women, they're like, they're like people, but, but nicer. Um, I just... It's incredible, and I love women so much. I married one, I love my wife, she's awesome. And God loves women more than men, I'm convinced of this. I am, I am, he just does. I mean, how else can you explain hair? I really, <laughs> my wife's hair is everywhere, everywhere. She's got a brush this big and it's everywhere. And yet she's got a full head of it. Mine's going away, I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> And if you guys, have you had this experience? I go to take a shower. I just go to turn it on and I look at the drain. It's like, whoa, wow. Is that a hamster? What is that? How? 
And she tried to encourage me, though. My wife said the other day, she goes, oh, I love your new haircut. And I'm like, thanks. She goes, oh, it's like a faux hawk. <laughs> I said, we don't have a faux hawk. And then I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, that looks like a faux hawk. And I'm telling you, I don't think it's a faux hawk. I just think the hair that's remaining is just going, stay together. Stay together. We got a better chance. And you know what I need more than anything in life is I need perspective. I just need perspective. And I got to tell you, I love older people too. I love women and older people. And older women are twice as great. And I just love older women. I love older men. I had a guy to show last year, 103 years old. And they, I said, bring him backstage. I want to meet this guy. And he came back. I said, dude, 103, that is awesome. You're amazing. That's amazing. I said, 103, what's the best part of being 103? And he goes, that's easy. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah, no peer pressure. <laughs> I said, dude, that is amazing. I've never used anybody else's material. Can I use that? And he goes, I won't remember. <laughs> I, I want that perspective that older people have, and I love that they have it in every situation. I was at a corporate event, president of the company. I said, how are you doing? She goes, well, I'm doing better. I said, why well, better? She goes, well, my dad passed on. I'm like, I'm so sorry. She goes, no, I just need a good laugh. It wasn't on unsuspecting. He said, we, we knew it was coming, but it just, it's just that adjustment. I'm like, that's great. I said, I, I, I just, I'll pray for you. I encourage her. And her son-in-law came up and she said, she tell you about Papa? I said, yeah. I said, she tell you about the hospital? I said, no. He says, Ken, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He said, we went into the hospital room. Papa was sitting there in a the corner with his oxygen mask on, head, eyes closed. Just <laughs> he says, we are planning his funeral with him. See, the weirdest thing I've ever seen. She's getting answers. I'm watching him. He, I'm, I'm not seeing any action there. Just fogging it up. He said, she goes, oh, Dad, you love that song. Do you want us to sing that song at your funeral? Okay, we'll sing that one. Okay. Um, oh, you love that song. Do you want us to sing that song? Okay, we'll do that one too. And, oh, Dad, Dad do you want us to do that? Like 10 questions. And he goes, I'm sitting there watching. I'm not seeing anything. Till the last question, he said, Papa's sitting there just. <laughs> and she said, Dad, I can't make this decision. Do you want to be cremated or do you want to be buried? We'll do whatever you want to do. He said, Papa's eyes just shot open. And he looked around the room, took two big deep breaths. <laughs> took the mask off his face, looked at everybody and just went, surprise me. <laughs> Process of getting older is not fun, though, is it? No, it's not. My wife, the other, she's a couple years younger than me. She's just like, oh my goodness, she woke up in the morning. Oh my goodness, my back. My back, it hurts. I'm like, yeah, I've had that. She goes, no, I don't think you understand. I didn't do anything. And my back hurts. I said, no, I've, I've had that issue. She goes, I was just sleeping. I said, I know. I asked the doctor. I had that. I asked the doctor about it. She goes, what did he say? And my wife's a little bit of a hypochondriac. And I said, well, he told me it was the early stages of OLD. Oh my goodness, what's that? <laughs> you getting old there, Buttercup. That's what that is. I hate getting older. It's not easy. It's not for wimps. Have you had this one yet? The other night, I pulled a muscle in my leg. Sleeping. <laughs> I'm just laying there. Oh, man! to the bathroom like a newborn deer. <laughs> Guy comes up to me after the show, some 20-something punk kid. He says, hey man, you know what that is, right? I said, what are you talking about? He says, you know what that is, right? The crap, you know what that is, right? Yeah, no, not really. He goes, you gotta hydrate, you're dehydrated. <laughs> it's gotta hydrate. <laughs> or you go to bed, hydrate. I said, dude, I'm in my 40s. I hydrate before bed, I'm peeing nine times. <laughs> Do 
Depends or cramps? <laughs> Sticking with the cramps for now. <laughs> Some push-ups or something. I'm getting old is not easy, but I, I got to tell you, and a marriage is wonderful. I love being married. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Hey, anybody, any newlyweds here tonight? Any newlyweds? Married less than a year. Anybody? That's, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You should be proud of that. I love being around newlyweds. They're just, oh, I love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. No, I love you more. I love you more. Just, when you're gone, I can't breathe. It's just like, it's like my heart's gone. It's like, look, he's going to work. He's coming home, all right? It's okay. It's all right. And then you go to the stage. We're in the stage now. We're in the stage now where it's like, we're seeing the differences in and that little 5% that's different can drive you crazy. I'm, I'm OCD. My wife's like, you are so OCD. OCD. I mean, and I am. My clothes are all in the right order and it's different colors. And, and I can't go by the sink where there's a dish. Oh, the dish. I've got to wash the dish. Wash the dish. And, and there's some good side effects. Ladies, I wash the dishes at my house. Okay? Yeah, I know. I vacuum without being asked. And try to contain yourself because I wash and soften and dry and fold and iron all the laundry at my house. <laughs> now I'm fully aware that I am below average looking, but for women over 30, I may have just become one of the sexiest men alive. <laughs> I did that at a show a couple weeks ago. Women were throwing clothes on the stage. I don't think they were turned on. I don't think they were going, iron this! Wash this! Well, if I have OCD, my wife has a condition I have termed G-I-L-D. Get it later disorder. I'll get it later. I didn't have time. I'll get it later. Later seems to never come get it later. It's dangerous. Went to the bathroom one night. She had left her drawer out. Just, just oh, oh, man, oh. Woke up the next day. She goes, what was that noise last night? What was that noise? I said, you left your drawer out. I cut my leg. She goes, oh, I didn't have time. I didn't have time. Said, what do you mean you didn't have time? I didn't have time. I was in a hurry. I didn't have time. I said, well, I tell you, get, get your stuff. Okay, get your iPhone, put it on the stopwatch. Ready? Time this. How long was that? <laughs> Let's do it again. Ready? How long? <laughs> wow. And, and you know, it was a little frustrating. I, I had a cough one night, walk downstairs, go to get a glass, go to open the cupboard. It was dark. I went to open it. I missed it because it was open. I just boom. <laughs> Wake up the next morning in a pool of blood on my pillow. She said, what happened to you? I said, I, I said you left the cupboard door. I didn't have time. <laughs> I, I didn't even get to finish. You didn't leave the cupboard off. Oh. And it can be so easy to get frustrated with those little pieces, but I, I don't because I, that's 95% of the time. She's incredible. I love the little pieces. God has blessed me with. My wife has a condition. 4-0 student, language arts teacher. And yet she will mix up words all the time. And it's just entertaining. We're having a disagreement in the middle of this disagreement. We don't fight really hard anymore. It's just disagreement. She goes, okay, okay, listen. Listen, you say potato, I say tomato. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's really not. Not even close. And then there's times I just don't, I don't even know what she's talking about. She goes, I'm just telling you, that just broke the last straw. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> Bad? We're driving, she wanted to throw an idea at me. She goes, No, I don't want you to make a decision. I'm not saying we have to do it. I just want to, I just want to put a bug in your ear to chew on. 